The VA has a bad habit of underrating a veteran's TBI diagnosis. I'm attorney Melanie Williams, and today I'm going to cover uh, a little bit about how the VA rates TBI. TBI tends to be one of those conditions that's complicated to rate because there are several different symptoms and effects that can come from it. TBI stands for traumatic brain injury, and it comes from a blow to the head or some kind of trauma that ends up affecting the brain and can result in several different symptoms, effects, difficulties, and it ranges in the different categories that the VA has set for it. So the VA has tried to categorize the residuals of TBI into five categories. There's cognitive functions, subjective symptoms, emotional and behavioral dysfunction, neurological dysfunction, and any other symptom that can result from TBI, because again, those don't cover all of the different potential effects of a TBI. For cognitive impairment, there is a chart that the VA has set out, and I'm going to go through it in a little more detail. For subjective symptoms, so some examples of that are migraines, Meniere's disease, so things where the veteran is experiencing and can be diagnosed separately, then it if the severity is enough to where it entitles its own rating, then it should be given a separate rating. So migraines is a perfect example of that. Migraines can be rated according to the severity and how often they happen. And so migraines should be rated separately. If the condition is not to where it is severe enough to be rated separately, then it should fall under the one category or the one table that the VA uses to rate the subjective symptoms. So the table is called the evaluation of cognitive impairment and other residuals of TBI not otherwise classified. So this is basically their catch all. If there's a symptom that results from the TBI that can't be rated separately, it should be rated under this category, this table. So the table is divided into 10 facets. You have concentration and executive function, judgment, social interaction, orientation, motor activity, visual spatial orientation, subjective symptoms, that's like what we talked about with the migraines, neurobehavioral effects, communication, and consciousness. So through each of these categories, there are different criteria where the evaluator or the doctor or the examiner would assign a, a, a number of either zero, one, two, or three. And each of those numbers corresponds to a different rating. So for example, if you don't have any issues with communication, it would assign, the, the examiner or the evaluator would assign a zero. If there is, for example, for concentration and executive function, if there is a mild impairment and it lists out the different, um, the different ways that you could be impaired, if it's mild, it would be a one. If it's moderate, it would be a two. If it's severe, it would be a three. And then whichever number is rated the highest. So if in one of those categories, you are assigned a three, that would entitle you to a 70% rating. If the highest number assigned is a two, that would entitle you to a 40% rating. And if the highest rating assigned or the highest number assigned is a one, that would entitle you to a 10% rating. So it all depends on the amount that it impacts you or how severe these different uh, symptoms are. And again, these are for the symptoms that don't fall into any other diagnostic code. It doesn't have its own diagnosis. So again, any conditions or diagnoses that can be rated separately and that have separate symptoms, those should be rated separately. But you do run into the issue of what's called pyramiding. So you can't have the same symptom under two different diagnoses and receive two different ratings. We'll have a separate video on that because TBI and PTSD are one of those things that often get mixed in together and it's hard to separate. So when the VA doesn't separate or, or they say that they can't separate it, they assign just one rating. But if you do have separate symptoms where some can be assigned to the PTSD diagnosis, some can be assigned to the TBI, then in that case, you would be entitled to a separate rating for each of those. Now that you have an idea of how the VA rates TBI, you can spot when the VA is under rating or just keep an eye out and look for where the VA may have messed up your rating. For more information, click on the link in the description or watch this video here.